Well, the relationship comes down to your psychological condition, your spiritual condition, your physical condition. All these attributes add up. And if there's a de deficit in any of these, be it by wisdom or health or weakness or something like that, then people can take advantage of this. See, a lot of people will come in to rescue you from your weaknesses. They play the rescuer. A lot of people get a big buzz out of coming in as a rescuer to rescue you from yourself to improve you as yourself <laughs> and we buy into this of course we're going to buy into this this is this is an asset we regard this person not only as being attractive but also as an asset okay and uh, what happens is what what happens when you buy a new car as soon as you roll it off the floor, that asset starts to diminish its value. And humans are the same. Sometimes we overvalue, by first glance, the person that we meet, the person that we encounter. Hey, quick, hop, hop. So that puts us in a blindsided, psychological position we we over rate the person that we've met we overrate that person and we blind ourselves from the judge judging for faculties that we need to be on point the love bomb stage of a relationship the first phase the initial contact the part where you meet someone and you're hungry for love, hungry for company. Is not justification for letting down our guard on how we are behaving first ourselves because we come become negligent toward ourselves. And then we become negligent to the reality of what the translation is of who this person is. We mistranslate a lot of the time by way of what we want to see. Um, we get in deep, we get into a situation that's too deep where we are unable to find our um, true evaluations, we misevaluate the reality of what we're seeing. The idea that um, people lose value is real. They can lose value because we don't act right, or they can lose value because it was just a passing phase. You were just a passing phase, you were really not as valuable as you thought you were. You were um, caught in the moment, as it were. You were lost in love. Um, but these ignorances aren't excuses for ending up in a situation of um, hurt and pain and trauma and neglect. When you meet what's described as the narcissist, the love bombing will be big. I've met women and and uh, I say this very carefully, but they've been in the bedroom within half an hour. Supposed to meet for an ice cream and go for a walk and get to know each other and just total strangers. Um, having intimacy and being used. I've been used many a time by a woman that's had a fight with a boyfriend only for watch her go back to the boyfriend and glad she did. A lot of these people are nothing but trouble. But you can't tell that 
in the initial meeting. So you need to give yourself time to see the reality of who this other person is. A lot of these people just have agendas. Um, they use, they will use you as a convenience to meet some need that's not being met inside them by a, usually by way of a breakdown in a previous relationship that was illegitimate, it wasn't for the right reasons. You're not going to know this. You see, if everyone had a data sheet on how they've tracked in their relationships, a lot of people would not have partners and a lot of people would have saved themselves a lot of grief, a lot of pain. When you weigh up that most people don't know how to navigate the dark side, as a matter of fact, they make the dark side their ally. They get infiltrated and influenced by evil spirits. They have no clue of their carnal nature. They run on that. They run on their lusts. When lust fires up, they're in bed with whoever is in front of them, which is called self-trashing, self-destructive behavior. Then put, add to that the cleverness of people that they are. Um, people that they are um, come into contact with that are going to use them at the same level. It's a toxic mix. It's a horrible mix. And so if we had a data sheet of people's performances within relationships, how, how they've acted, what their attitude was, were they moral? Were they integral? Were they narcissistic? Did they have um, the right outlook? Were they honest, transparent, or were they deceptive and holding things back that the relationship required? There wouldn't be, you would see dating site profiles they're going to be, they're going to be, <laughs> they're not going to be the true reflection of who the person is in most cases. There's a big thing going on in Australia where people on dating sites are um, complaining about abuse. And um, in some cases, violence psychological and physical violence through these dating sites. I don't recommend using the dating sites. I've never met anybody that's had or been able to produce a long-lasting relationship off a dating site um, of any value. That's usually why they're on there. It's, it's a way of being a predator and grooming and just finding vulnerable people that can be taken advantage of. Um, the dating sites are not going to give you the true perception of who the person is. It's just not going to. And so you'll be putting yourself in situations that you ought not to put yourself in. And again, you end up dealing with all the covert dysfunctions that will surface as the relationship goes on. Relationships come down to your mental health, as I said at the start, spiritual, intellectual, and physical health. And if you're lacking in any of these, in any way, You missed it. You missed it. If you're lacking in any of these, 
you will end up possibly broken hearted, disappointed, abused, dismayed and in trauma. Come back to yourself, separate away from the situation you put yourself in, these people were never going to be able to navigate you, you were never going to be able to navigate them, accept your differences, go no contact, re-establish yourself within yourself in your mental, physical, spiritual and intellectual capabilities. Go no contact and never ever ever go back. <laughs>